few power players in the world of X-Men are as essential to Krakoa with as much baggage between them as Jean Grey and Emma Frost, two of the world's most powerful telepaths and members of Krakoa's Quiet Council. Today I'll answer, what does this giant size special mean for Jean and Emma in the Krakoa era? What's the big picture role of the five Hickman written giant size specials in Dawn of X? And what do you need to know about the history between Jean and Emma before reading Giant Size X-Men, Jean Grey, and Emma Frost. I'm debuting founder and editor-in-chief of Comic Book Herald. If you like the Comic Book Herald YouTube channel or podcast, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. Links to CBH channels and Patreon support are included in the show notes. You can find full X-Men and comic book reading orders on comicbookherald.com, including all of the Dawn of X. Spoilers for discussed comics may follow. In our first of five Giant Size issues written by Jonathan Hickman with alternating artistic showcases, we get Russell Dowderman and Matt Wilson the powerhouse duo that made the Jane Foster era of Thor and War of the Realms so incredible, taking on a Jean Grey and Emma Frost combo adventure. Get your Krakoan translators ready because Giant Size Jean and Emma is a nearly silent issue, with Krakoan language gates offering some of the only text in the issue. For those of you who don't feel like playing cryptographer, the opening text reads, Silence, Psychic Rescue in Progress. Jean and Emma's psychic rescue is required after Storm is found badly wounded and comatose on Krakoa. Why Jean and Emma for this giant size special? In addition to a long-running, frequently nasty history that dates back to the early 80s Dark Phoenix saga, Jean Grey and Emma Frost also stand out as the female leads of the Grant Morrison-written, Frank Quietly designed New X-Men. Frank Quietly designed New X-Men. <laughs> I always get that one wrong. It makes a lot of sense that Hickman, whose passion for New X-Men is well-publicized and clearly influences all things X-Men, Dowderman and Wilson would take to New X-Men number 121 in particular. This is a silent issue in which Jean and Emma venture inside the psychic swamp of Cassandra Nova to save Professor X. It actually came from a time period in the early 2000s where Marvel was running all silent issues as part of a Nuff Said initiative. With art by Quietly, New X-Men number 121 is a psychedelic explosion of ideas in which we learn Professor X tried to kill his twin sister, Cassandra Nova, in utero. Notably, Jean is easily the most successful of the adventuring telepaths, as she points out to Emma at issue's end. Frankly, if you read nothing else prior to the Giant Size special, you should consider New X-Men 121 for inspiration and reference points, of which there are several very fun ones. So venturing into Storm's psychic landscape, we get a nice callback to the characters' shared histories. Whereas Storm's psychic defenses recognize Jean Grey as a friend, they also recognize Emma Frost as a longtime enemy. Indeed, back in Uncanny X-Men number 151 to 152, Emma took control of Storm's body in order to use her to trick and manipulate the X-Men, among plenty of other misdeeds. As a result, Emma gets attacked by Dowderman and Wilson going to town on giant-sized psychic lions, panthers, and snakes. It's a reminder that Emma's history with the X-Men is ripe with baggage, much of which makes Jean and Emma working together in an unlikely scenario to begin with. Jean and Emma Frost first meet in the pages of Uncanny X-Men during the Dark Phoenix Saga, which more or less spans issues 129 to 138, but arguably has been building since Giant Size X-Men number 1 in 1975. This is during Emma's black and white, well, mostly white, straight-up supervillain days, without all the nuance and complexity that Claremont lobbed El Bacalo in the pages of Generation X, Morrison, and countless other creators would add to her character in the decades to come. As a result, her and Phoenix era Jean quickly throw down as Jean unleashes the full might of the Phoenix on Emma's not inconsequential psychic powers. In a sense, Emma would have the last laugh, manipulating Jean into becoming the Black Queen of the Hellfire Club alongside Jason Wingard. In terms of the duo's relationship, it's worth acknowledging that Jean always has the mutant power's edge, as the only Omega-level mutant among the two. Emma's cunning and cruelty can lead to victories, but dating back to their earliest battle, she has to know Jean has the edge on her if she wants to escalate things. The biggest addition to the two's dynamic takes place in New X-Men number 139, written by Morrison with art by Phil Jimenez, when Jean walks in to find Cyclops and Emma engaged in a months-long psychic affair. Worse yet, part of Emma's sex therapy is to cosplay as Jean. At this point in New X-Men, Jean and Scott's relationship was pretty obviously falling apart, but nonetheless, Jean's understandably enraged when she has to find Scott with Emma of all people. New X-Men continues a trend of rehabilitating Emma as a full member of the X-Men, so the extent of Jean's torturous reaction is a reminder that she's not merely an aggrieved angel herself. Jean lashes out at Emma as cruelly as we've ever really seen her, leaving Emma a literal mess of diamonds by issue's end. That's a big part of the reason it's so full of meaning when Jean and Emma in Giant Size X-Men, this issue that came out today, literally have to put their heads together to escape their psychic defeat in an all-encompassing darkness. It's a deliberate metaphor for what the Krakoa era means for these characters, but also for mutants coming together despite past grievances. 
As we've seen, despite the duo's history, by the time House of X and Powers of Ten culminate in a new Krakoan nation state for mutant kind, Jean and Emma are amicable enough and together enough in their cause to share a beer and celebrate. Giant Size really cements that allyship yet again in ways that are undeniable, albeit still plenty breakable in future stories. The issue functions as an incredible artistic showcase for Dowderman and Wilson, showing off both beautiful Jean and Emma designs as well as wonders like the duo riding a psychic butterfly elephant that Disney should definitely look into incorporating in the live-action Dumbo. Wilson's colors are particularly remarkable. Pages frequently seem to glow as if the comic book paper is made of some newfound fluorescent technology, and nobody in comics, at least this side of Christian Ward, sells superhero explosions quite like Dowderman and Wilson. They are genuinely my favorite artist and colorist combo, I think, def in all of Marvel comics, possibly in all of superhero comics, and right now they're up there for just comics, period. They're incredible creative partnership. By issue's end, Jean and Emma uncover Storm and find that she's been insidiously infected by the Children of the Vault's machine technology. It's an unsettling development with Storm's skin tearing away to reveal Terminator-esque robotic underpinnings. The infection within Storm's mind brings into question, how did the Vault achieve all this? And who else on the Cohen Island could be similarly affected? The closing page is a wonderfully on-the-nose callback to New X-Men number 121, with Jean telling Cyclops and Wolverine, the children of the vault gave Storm a machine virus that's going to kill her in the next 30 days. We ought to talk. My expectation is this thread will carry through the giant size series, perhaps following various characters taking on the vault plot lines. But especially given the news that the fifth and final giant size series will be a Storm special, you have to expect that there's going to be, again, follow-up on these newfound vault machine viruses. We know the next couple issues are going to be, in the giant size series, are going to be Magneto, um, and Nightcrawler is to come, as well as Phantomax, and then the final will be Storm. So I'm very curious to see how all these characters' plot lines might ultimately come together in this giant size artistic showcase. On a final note, I do have questions that remain about the timing of this issue. We saw Storm and various X-Men take on the Children of the Vault in X-Men number 5, but we've seen Storm at apparent full health in the pages of Marauders since that time. As a result, I'm more inclined to believe this is an attack by the Children of the Vault that has occurred since the events of X-Men number 5, and that we'll learn, we'll learn more about it in the coming Giant Size issues. That is particularly interesting to me because, again, at the end of X-Men number 5, we saw the X-Men, the Council, send in three mutants, Laura Kinney, X-23, uh, a.k.a. All-New Wolverine, and Sink and Darwin, in order to sort of investigate and understand this uh, vault compound that they unleashed. They knew they could survive going in, but they knew that, you know, time progresses very differently in there, that these characters might age up uh, substantially by the time they come out. But what this potentially means is none of those mutants have come out yet, but could we have agents of the vault, children of the vault, who have left that location since the mutants entered and have infected Storm? I'm sure there will be more to come on that, but I'm very interested to see, are there just Children of the Vault operatives outside of that base, sort of, uh, you know, like, influencing the world, and in this case, attacking some of Krakoa's own? It's also a welcome twist that the role of the Gene Emma giant size issue sets up more for Storm and the Children of the Vault than the two ostensible stars of the show. Gene and Emma both have pretty significant roles in the Dawn of X currently. Emma in the pages of Marauders and Gene, of course, you know, throughout X-Force and also both are members of the Quiet Council. So they're very relevant in Krakoan proceedings. And to make the giant size instead sort of focus on what is going on with Storm and how can we expand this, this what Professor X called the greatest threat to mutant kind in the Children of the Vault, I think is a very intelligent angle for Hickman and company to take. And I am I was already really, really looking forward to all of these showcases um, for various artists. You know, we're going to have, uh, for example, Alan Davis on the Nightcrawler issue. So there's just going to be, and like obviously, as I mentioned, Dowderman and Wilson are some of my absolute favorites in comics. But now, you know, I'm poked on the story as well. So these are super fun. I'm enjoying it. I'm curious to see how much more it's going to really add for a Koa. If you have opinions, thoughts, comments, please share them here on the YouTube channel. Of course, you can find me anywhere at Comic Book Herald Online. You can find guides, notes, commentary, analysis all over on ComicBookHerald.com. Thanks, everybody, for listening. As always, it's been fun. It's a huge week, huge week for X-Men Comics, so I'll be back soon with more videos on the state of the X-Men and Kraken Krakoa in this new landscape. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and enjoy the comics.